Okay, so this is my second time recording this video. The first time I forgot to turn my microphone on and performed for my cat. So she approved of it. Let's see if you approve of it the second time around now that I have a little bit of practice. So what we're going to be talking today is we're going to be talking about viewing, creating, and editing files. So I've already showed you the echo command. If you recall, we used echo to create uh, a file, right? We created a hello.txt. And we can just echo hello out to the terminal. We could say echo hello, and it'll say hello back. Um, so what we can do with echo is we can use it to write to a file. So if we were to say echo hey, and then we write it to hey.txt, well, we can look and see that hey.txt is here. And you can see my files from the uh, previous one. So I'm trying to come up with more ways of saying hello. Um, but we're going to use hey.txt here. So if we cat hey.txt, all cat does is print out to the screen what is in a file. It says hey. Okay, so let's say we want to append cat, or we want to append hey.txt. Well, we can tab up here. What if we just say hey again? And we've got this greater than symbol here, and we're just putting it into the hey.txt file. Well, that didn't work. We didn't append it. We actually overwrote it. So what if, what, what can we use to actually over or append this here? What we can do is we could say hey again again, right, just to give us something different. And we can add a second greater than symbol here. So now if we cat the file, you can see that we actually appended to the end of it. So this becomes incredibly useful when we are either adding stuff to a list, say we're gathering IP addresses and we just want to combine our lists, or when we're creating a series of commands and we're going to use those commands to send all at once. We're going to cover that later when we're talking about file transfers in the penetration testing section where we use um, a set of commands like this on a Windows machine to actually transfer files via FTP. It's just so much easier than uh, typing them all in one by one. We can create a little document and run the document. So this becomes useful when we have a series of commands and for other reasons as well as you'll learn as you go on in your Linux career. So We've talked about echo and we've talked about cat. So let's talk about some other ways to create a file. We can use something called touch and just say new file.txt. And if we ls, you could see that new file.txt is here. But if we cat new file, there's nothing in there because we haven't put anything in there yet. So there's a few things that we can do. We could use echo and append the file, right? We could also use a tool called nano. Now Nano is a terminal text editor. There are other terminal text editors like Vi and Vim. I don't prefer those personally. I like Nano the most. Some people have their preferences. So I encourage you to play around with any of them as you wish. Vi and Vim are the other two. Um, but for this course, we're going to be using Nano. So if I say Nano new file.txt, I could type whatever I want in here. And we're going to be using Nano a lot to um, create scripts, to create Python scripts, and to uh, edit shell code as we get into a little bit of exploit development. So I'm going to hit Control X. I'm going to hit Y for saving, and then uh, we'll save it to new file.txt. If we cat this, now it says, "Hey, I could type whatever I want in here." So that's one way of editing it. Another way of editing it is using a graphical interface. So we can use gedit and say new file. And if you don't like using a terminal, um, you're more than welcome to use gedit here. Uh, just type in new line here and save it. And I, I like using gedit. It's a lot cleaner because I can you know highlight and delete. I don't have to use my keyboard to navigate around uh, like I do in the terminal. So if you have the option to use gedit, for sure, but sometimes you're going to be on another machine that's not your own or is headless and doesn't have a GUI, that you're going to have to use nano. So get comfortable using both. So we save this. Let's go ahead and cat it out and see what happens. Okay, you can see that the new line is in there. 
So really that's the overview that I wanted to cover. So just know that you can create files pretty much using Echo, Touch, uh, and actually you can create files using Nano as well. If you say Nano, this is new.txt, I'll just say hello, control X, save it. If you ls, you can see this is new.txt is right here. So um, you can use all of these tools in different ways to create files. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. Personally, when I'm creating a file, I use Nano and I just create a new shell script, Python script, uh, text document that way. Uh, you could also do it using gedit as well. So just uh, know that we're going to be using these a lot and try to get comfortable with these. And from here, we're going to be moving into controlling Kali services. So we're just going to briefly talk about what services you need running on boot and how to do that.